training on laboratory accreditation processes by various accreditation bodies. This training details about complete process, from laboratory readiness to accreditation of laboratories by different accreditation bodies such as NABL, IAS, QAI, A2LA, EIAC, BUCAS, ANUS, and other accreditation bodies, and also detail about the reasons for laboratory accreditation suspensions. Before that, please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon for regular updates. Laboratory Readiness Before going for the accreditation application, laboratory should have Number 1. Facility The laboratory should have adequate space, effective separation between incompatible activities, suitable access controls, adequate lighting, a water facility, electricity connections, and suitable testing areas for different types of tests, meeting or training facilities, documentation area, etc. Construction or building materials should not invalidate the quality of the results. Suitable environmental conditions for correct performance of laboratory testing activities. Number 2. Legal registration. Laboratory should be legally registered with country-specific statutory body or government regulations. Example in India. One person company. Registration certificate under the Companies Act, 2013. Limited Liability Partnership. Registration certificate under the Limited Liability Partnership Act, 2008. Registration certificate under the Companies Act, 1956 or 2013. Society or Trust. Registration Certificate under Societies Registration Act, 1860, or Registration under the Indian Trusts Act, 1882. Government Laboratories Number 3. Competent Manpower Laboratory management should hire competent manpower relevant to the scope of testing, with relevant experience. Number 4. Suitable Equipments Equipment should be suitable for performing the testing for scope of laboratory and those equipment should be capable of achieving required accuracy. Number 5. Resources such as chemicals, consumables, reference standards, etc. Laboratory management should provide the resources for performing the testing activities in the laboratory, such as suitable chemicals with the required purity, reference standards with metrological traceability, and suitable consumables for the laboratory scope of testing. Establishment of quality management systems as per ISO slash IEC 17025 colon 2017 or ISO 15189 colon 2022 or relevant standard requirements, as per which standard, the laboratory is willing to gain accreditation and also as per the specific accreditation body requirements. Upon the establishment of quality management systems in the laboratory, the laboratory should train all of its employees on established quality management systems for their consistent application in day-to-day -day laboratory operations. Decide on the products, test parameters for which the laboratory is willing to apply for accreditation. Design and develop the scope based on business needs. Upon designing the scope, the laboratory should perform the method verifications or validations and calculate the measurement uncertainty for each parameter applying for scope of accreditation. Upon completion of method verifications or method validations, the laboratory should participate in the proficiency testing programs from ISO 17034 accredited PT providers or if there are no PT providers available for the scope developed by the laboratory, the laboratory can initiate or participate in an interlaboratory comparison program. Internal Audit The laboratory should conduct the internal audit or self-inspection as per the established quality management system, standard requirements, and applicable accreditation body requirements. MRM
The laboratory should conduct the management review meeting as per the requirements of the standard, record the outcome of the management review meeting, and follow up on the actions initiated as part of the management review. Creditation Application Submission Upon completion of all the previously mentioned activities, laboratory should file the application for accreditation of laboratory, as per the specific standard to specific accreditation body. Accreditation Application Details Most commonly, accreditation bodies need the following information, but not limited to. Accreditation bodies will have a specific format or template for the application. Laboratories should access the application from a specific accreditation body. Some of the accreditation bodies with portals, such as NABL, Laboratory have to register with NABL to get a user ID and password to get access to the application. Laboratories should provide the following information in the application. Laboratory name. Address of the laboratory. Legal identity details. Contact details. Organization chart. Details of the facility, whether it is a permanent facility or a mobile facility. Latest internal audit dates. Latest management review date. Upon completion of filling out those details, the laboratory should fill in the details of the scope of testing, such as product category and subcategory, if those categories are the requirements of the accreditation body, product name, test parameter, method of analysis, and measurement uncertainty value for the specific parameter. Equipment details such as name of equipment, make, model, serial number, calibration date, calibration due date, and calibration done by details. Equipments The laboratory should also provide details of staff, their names, designations, qualifications, and experiences as well as details of authorized signatories for those who are authorized to sign off the reports. Details of reference standards, such as name of standard, make, expiry date, and traceability details, are relevant to the scope of accreditation. Details of proficiency testing and interlaboratory comparison participations and performance scores. Upon filling out all the details, the laboratory should submit the application to the accreditation body along with the organization chart, legal registration certificate, and quality manual. Upon submission of application by laboratory to accreditation body, the accreditation body will scrutinize the application, and if any clarifications or corrections are needed in the application, those details will be informed to the laboratory for further corrections and submission of the corrected application. Upon submission of the corrected application by the laboratory, the accreditation body will plan a pre-assessment. This pre-assessment is optional for most of the accreditation bodies. If laboratory is not willing to continue with the pre-assessment, it should provide the proper justification to skip the pre-assessment. If laboratory opts for pre-assessment, the accreditation body assigns the auditors to the pre-assessment of the laboratory. Auditors will visit the laboratory and provide the observations. Laboratory has to close those pre-assessment observations for proceeding with the final assessment. Upon closure of pre-assessment observation, the accreditation body allots the auditor for quality manual adequacy. The auditor will review the quality manual and provide comments or observations, if any. The laboratory has to correct the quality manual as per the observations. Upon completion of quality manual adequacy, the accreditation body will schedule the final assessment and assign the auditors for the final assessment. The number of auditors will depend on the scope of testing submitted by the laboratory. Assigned auditors will complete the final assessment and raise the non-conformances, if required, the laboratory has to take the proper corrective actions and submit the documentary evidence, to the auditors for review, and closure, auditors will review those corrective actions, and if they are satisfactory, the auditors will close the non-conformances.
Upon the closure of nonconformances by the auditors, all the nonconformances, corrective actions will be reviewed by expert members of the Accreditation Committee or Accreditation Task Force. If any clarification is required by the committee members, accreditation body communicates the same to the laboratory, so they can provide the clarification. The laboratory has to review and provide clarification for each point mentioned in the committee review report. Upon providing the clarifications by the laboratory, the committee will review the clarifications, and if those are found to be satisfactory, the committee will grant accreditation to the laboratory. Upon receipt of the accreditation certificate, the laboratory has to comply with the standards and accreditation body requirements. The accreditation body will conduct the surveillance audits the first year after granting the accreditation, it may be desktop surveillance or on-site surveillance audits, and the frequency of the surveillance audits will vary depending on the different accreditation bodies. The laboratory has to apply for renewal of accreditation before the accreditation certificate expires, as per the timeline requirements of the accreditation body. Now we detail the reasons for suspensions of laboratory accreditation. It is very important to comply with accreditation body requirements and standard requirements after granting accreditation to a laboratory. Laboratory may get suspended if There are serious violations that directly impact the quality of results and the quality of products. Non-compliant with the accreditation body's requirements Misuse of accreditation status, or misuse of accreditation symbol. If you are looking for any other trainings, please let us know through comments, and we will try to include those trainings. Thank you. Happy learning.